Hi, my name is Mary Perry, and welcome to the Wellness Zone podcast. Today, I'm here with Dr. Barry Sears. Dr. Sears, thanks for being with me. Thank you, Mary. So, Dr. Sears, today we're going to talk about wellness and insulin resistance. But first, let's start with wellness. Um, this is a term that's thrown out there a lot that people don't really have a good definition of. So, how do you define wellness? Well, I define wellness as the absence of insulin resistance. You say, say what? I say <laughs> the absence of insulin resistance. We have lots of definitions for disease. My blood pressure is too high. I've got cancer. Uh, I can't remember where my keys uh, left my keys. But we don't have any good medical definitions for wellness. Uh, people I say, I'm well because I'm not sick. I say, that's not scientific. But, so we need a definition of wellness. And understanding what basically causes us to become from going from well to basically having disease. And the answer is, it's, we need a definition of how efficient our metabolism is. It's our metabolism that keeps us well. It's our metabolism that basically allows us to live a longer and better life. So how do we know with a simple blood test how efficient our metabolism is? And uh, there is one test actually developed in 1985. A standard test is called HOMA-IR. That's called Homeostatic Assessment of Insulin Resistance. That one simple test will tell you how efficient your metabolism is. If it's below one, basically, you're well. That, that's the definition of wellness. If it's above one, you're no longer well. You're not sick yet, but you're no longer well. When it gets above two, basically, you're getting sick because now you're developing what is called insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is like a catch term, catch-all term that describes an inefficient metabolism. So what happens when, you, let's say, you have a car? And it, it's still running, but not running efficiently. Say, well, I'll get around to it. But eventually, something breaks down. Now you've got problems. So again, from a medical standpoint, we really want to be defining how do we maintain wellness? And the answer is eliminating insulin resistance. And what drug do we use? There is no drug, but there is the diet. If you're willing to treat the diet as if it were a drug. Okay. So wellness is the absence of insulin resistance, but really insulin resistance comes down to having an efficient metabolism. Is that exactly. a quick summary there? Okay. Well, what leads to insulin resistance is basically of inflammation. Mm -hmm. Inflammation. And really the, the first organ in your body that's most susceptible to insulin resistance is your fat cells. So what's the first sign you're, you're insulin resistant? Gaining weight. Your gaining clothes, fat. Your, your clothes <laughs> don't fit. <laughs> and that means you're gaining fat, abdominal fat. And so that's usually our first sign. Now, uh, as you walk around the streets of America, are Americans less fat today than they were 20 years ago? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> so that says one thing. We have a growing amount of insulin resistance. Now, 20 years ago, uh, basically using that HOMA IR test I talked about, maybe 5% of Americans were well. Today, it's probably less than 1%. Crazy. And so the higher the level of insulin resistance, the more easily it is to accumulate excess body fat. And from that excess body fat in the organs, it now basically spreads throughout the body like a cancer to cause metabolic disturbances in every other organ in the body. So eventually when it hits the pancreas, you get diabetes. The heart, you get heart disease. Uh, the kidney, kidney disease, liver disease, neurological disease. These are all basically manifestations of the same thing, increased levels of insulin resistance caused by a pro-inflammatory diet. So now when we say pro-inflammatory diet, what things in the diet are going to lead to inflammation? Well, several things. Uh, one group would be things we take too much of, like too many calories, or eat too many white things like uh, white bread, white pasta, uh, white rice, white potatoes, or uh, having uh, things such as too many simple sugars, like glucose or fructose in our diet, or too many omega-6 fatty acids, or too many saturated fatty acids, like palmitic acid. You say, oh my God, stop, stop, stop. I, I have to get along with my life. Saying, well, these are things that make your life a lot more difficult, but there's more. There's other things we don't get enough in our diet. Things such as omega-3 fatty acids. These are found in fish. Or polyphenols. These are found in fruits and vegetables. 
and there's more. You need the right balance of protein to carbohydrate to maintain a hormonal balance. So if you can do all three of those things, you can basically tune up your metabolism. That's what we call metabolic engineering. And by doing so, you can basically turn back the hands of time. Now, is that an idle statement? No. Uh, in terms of uh, medicine today, it's primarily, especially nutritional medicine, is driven primarily by bloggers and biohackers. They say, I have a secret, or there's some kind of cabal by the drug companies to basically prevent the knowledge of how to basically treat disease. Now, you know, I mean, I said I had a little science behind that support, but really, they're actually right. If we had an efficient metabolism, our levels of chronic disease would be dramatically lowered. Once we basically understanding metabolism, it's very complex. It's taking breakthroughs in molecular biology to crack the molecular code of how it works. And once you know how metabolism works, then you can develop a dietary program personalized to the individual that allows them to maximize their metabolism. And the success is the absence of insulin resistance. Breaking it down for everybody here, we're going to start with an anti-inflammatory diet which will make your metabolism more efficient. And that way you keep insulin in a healthy range so you don't get insulin resistance and thus you have wellness. <laughs> exactly. Now, <laughs> is the diet the only thing? No, there are other things that can also affect uh, your metabolic efficiency. One is exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, another is stress reduction. Oh yes, I take my yoga class. Thank great. Are they all equal? No, no. I use the 80-15-5 rule. 80% of your ability to control your metabolism comes from your diet. 15% comes from exercise. And 5% coming from stress reduction. They're all good, but they're not equal. So you can see the best exercise program, the best yoga classes will not overcome bad diet. Right. And like you said, you can always look at your blood to see if you have your you know, markers in the desirable range for someone who isn't able to get their HOMA IR tested, which is, is a calculation that looks at your insulin levels and your glucose. Are there other blood parameters that you can use to gauge whether you're doing a good job with your diet? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, they can look at the different aspects of the, the diet. Uh, one uh, aspect is saying, am I getting enough omega-3 fatty acids? There's a simple finger stick blood test that can measure that. And uh, you're trying to keep that in an appropriate zone between about 1.5 and 3. The higher the number, the more inflamed you are. The average American is about 20. I say, yikes, that's more than mm. 3. I say, right. Yes. Uh, another aspect of saying, am I getting enough polyphenols, those chemicals found in fruits and vegetables? I can look at a blood marker called glycosylated hemoglobin, and I like to keep that between 4.9 and 5.1%. Usually the doctors say, if it's less than 5.6, you're, you're okay. Well, 5.6 is more than 5.1. You're not okay. You're, you're not sick yet, but you're not well. So we're looking for basically definitions of wellness. And finally, am I basically getting the right balance of protein to carbohydrate? I can look at now the ratio of triglycerides to HDL. That should be less than one. So... That has now basically blood markers. Now it sounds like science. Science will tell me how to stay well. I don't have to listen to a blogger or a, a, you know, basically a, a, a biohacker. No, show me the science. And the, some, one thing science has shown us in human beings, forget rats, in human beings, the only thing that basically, basically increases the uh, metabolism is calorie restriction. And say, well, who wants to go through life being hungry all the time, even if I'm living longer? Well, the secret of uh, what we've been working on for at least many uh, decades is understanding how can we control metabolism by restricting calories and yet at the same time having no hunger or fatigue. Sounds like the holy grail. Right. <laughs> it's really the holy grail of not only basically nutrition, but the holy grail of medicine refocusing medicine, not to treat the symptoms of chronic disease, but to maintain wellness as long as possible. Well, like you said, Dr. Sears, the science is quite complex. Wellness is not just about how you feel in your own skin, but uh, you walked us through really what the science is behind it, how to do it, and then how to actually measure it. So I really appreciate you taking the time to, to walk us through that today. Thank you very much. 
For more on this subject and many other topics on the science of wellness, go to drsears.com.